Greetings. My name is Tim Stark. I'm a professor of civil engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm recording videos to demonstrate the ASTM test methods to measure the index and certified properties used to assess or evaluate geomembranes for containment applications. Today, I will demonstrate ASTM test method D1204, standard test method for linear dimensional changes of non-rigid thermoplastic sheeting or film at elevated temperatures. This test basically checks the changes in linear dimensions in the machine direction and transverse direction to changes in elevated temperatures. In this test, we will subject the geomembrane to an elevated temperature of 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. We use two specimens for the test. We take one specimen from the edge of the roll and that could come from either edge, say here where I'm pointing, or it could come from the other edge here. Just one edge specimen and a center specimen as you see where the pointer is. So there are two specimens that will be subjected to elevated temperatures for 15 minutes. Each specimen is 10 inches by 10 inches or 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters. So it is initially a perfect square and you can cut it with a die to get the initial dimension correct. The machine direction is labeled, so machine direction is this way on the geomembrane. The transverse direction is this way on the geomembrane. The geomembrane will be placed on a piece of paper before placing the geomembrane, a little talc powder is placed on top of the brown paper so no friction develops between the geomembrane and the paper. The geomembrane is placed on top of the talc. And then some additional talc is placed on top of the geomembrane. And a second piece of paper is placed over top of the geomembrane. Now the geomembrane is secured between the two pieces of paper with paper clips. The paper clips are placed along the edge of the brown paper and that prevents the geomembrane from crinkling or rolling up during the elevated temperatures in the oven. So for example, there are four paper clips holding the two pieces of brown paper together. So now this configuration is placed in the oven at 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. I am placing it in the oven. After 15 minutes, it is brought out. And here is a specimen from the edge of the geomembrane roll that has been subjected to 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. After it's brought out of the oven, it is allowed to equilibrate for one hour. So it has equilibrated for one hour, and now I take a ruler. This, in this particular case, it's in millimeters to facilitate measuring the length and width of the heated specimen. So I will measure the transverse direction first. And that is facilitated because I previously marked the midpoint of the transverse direction with these two black marks and the machine direction. And then after heating, I just measure that between those two black points again. So I'm measuring the same point uh, across the geomembrane. So in the transverse direction, I measure 251 millimeters. And now in the machine direction, I measured 252 millimeters. 
I would do the same. This happens to be the edge specimen. I do the same for the center specimen. And so I'd have the results for two specimens to conduct the dimensional stability test. So here are the calculations for these two specimens. I started with the edge specimen. The initial dimensions are Two fifty four. There's my data sheet. Edge and center. Two fifty four initial and two fifty four initial in the transverse. I measured two fifty two in the machine and two fifty one in the transverse direction. Now I calculate the percent change or linear change in the specimen due to the heating and that's given by this simple expression here. You take the final measurement and subtract the initial measurement divided by the initial measurement and multiply by 100. So here are the calculations for the edge specimen. The final is 252 minus 254 divided by the initial, which is 254, and that's multiplied by 100 to put it in percent. And if you calculate that, I get minus, because the specimen became smaller, 0.79%. In the transverse direction, it's 251 minus 254 divided by the initial 254 times 100, and that gives me minus 1.2%. Again, minus because it decreased in linear dimension. So, in the machine direction, about 0.8, let me zoom up my calculations, 252 minus 254, and then in the transverse, 251 minus 254 gives me minus 1.2. Okay, the center specimen, I made those measurements before, 251.5 and 251. So those calculations are 251.5 minus 254 divided by 254, and that gives me minus 0.98%, or essentially minus 1%. And then in the transverse direction, it's 251 minus 254, times 100 is, again, minus 1.2 percent. So the average change in the machine direction is minus 0.89 percent, and in the transverse direction, minus 1.2 percent. So that would be the end result. It's the average of the machine direction and the transverse direction, 0.89 and 1.2. So, the specified values for this geomembrane, which is a 30 mil PVC geomembrane, is shown down at the bottom of the data sheet. 30 mil, it can have a linear change of 3%. So, this geomembrane passes the linear or dimensional stability test 
because both the machine direction and transverse direction change is less than 3%. That's all there is to ASTM D1204, dimensional stability for unreinforced geomembranes. If you have any questions, please email me at fabricatedgeomembrane at gmail.com or visit our website at fabricatedgeomembrane.com and the email message is fabricatedgeomembrane at gmail.com.